Thanks for watching this video. The objective of this screencast is learners will be able to graph an exponential function. So here is the definition of an exponential function. An exponential function is any function of the form f of x equals a times b to the x power. Notice the, um, the input, the x, is not the base of an expression that has an exponent, but it's the exponent. Uh, and there are some restrictions there. a can't be 0. If a were 0, then you'd have 0 times anything, and the function would just be f of x is 0, uh, which is really just a linear. It's a horizontal line through the origin. And then b itself needs to be a positive number, uh, and it needs to not equal 1. Uh, it can't be 1, because if it was, you'd have like 1 to the x power, and no matter what you chose for x, you'd get 1. That's also kind of a linear situation there. So here are a couple examples of some exponential functions. If I were to write f of x equals 5 times 2 to the x power, that counts as an exponential function. a is 5 and b is 2. Here's another one, g of x. There's nothing that says that, uh, that, <clears throat> that a can't be negative. You could have negative 4 times 1 sixth to the x power. There's nothing that says that b has to be a uh, like an integer necessarily. The reason we use b for that second number there is that we tend to call that the base of the exponential function for reasons you'll probably see in a minute. Okay, we're going to look at some examples of graphing exponential functions, which is the goal of this uh, this first screencast. Let's try to graph the function f of x equals 3 to the x power. You know, it's worth pointing out that that actually does fit the definition of the exponential function on the previous screen, because I could call that 1 times 3 to the x power. So in that definition, a is 1 and b is 3. The simplest way I can show you to make uh, this graph is to th think about making a table of values, just as you did probably in Algebra 1. I want to think about, though, what kind of values best describe the shape here. And I think what I'd like to do is I'd like to make sure I pick 0 as an input. I'd like to pick a couple of positive values, and I'd like to pick a couple negatives as well. If I can get those five values here taken care of, we should be good. All I'm going to do to find the y values, the f of x values, is to replace each x in the rule. So I'll start at 0, move forward, and then I'll go backwards. If x is 0, I've got 3 to the 0th power, and any non-zero number to the 0 power is 1. 3 to the 1st power is 3, and 3 to the 2nd power is 9. Now if I let x be negative 1, I've got 3 to the negative first power. And what you need to remember about negative exponents is that's the same as 1 over uh, the number with a positive exponent. So 3 to the negative first is the same as 1 over 3 to the first, or just 1 third. And 3 to the negative second, well, that's 1 over 3 squared, which is 1 over 9. So I've got five ordered pairs that I can plot now. I can plot 0, 1. I can plot 1, 3, I can plot 2, 9, you know, I can plot 3, the next thing, but 3 cubed is 27, it's off the graph. I can plot negative 1, a third, which I'm going to have to just ballpark a little bit, and then negative 2, 1 ninth, that's going to look really close on our graph to y equals 0. So what's going to happen for this exponential graph is, uh, for negative values, this one's going to get closer and closer to zero. It won't actually get there. So I'm going to draw. It's really hard to draw this thing still decreasing a little bit and then off the axis. Do the best you can. But for big positive x's, this thing is going to grow huge. The next number would be 27, like all the way off the graph. It never does get like straight up and down like uh, vertical. It might look that way drawing it. And for big negative x's, it never gets straight horizontal. But there's our sketch. There's a sketch of our graph. 
Here's another example. f of x is 2 times 1 half to the x power. Here a is 2 and b is a half. Let's make a table of values. x and f of x. And just like before, I'll pick 0, 1, 2, and I'll go back and hit a couple of negative zeros, uh, negative x's as well. So when x is 0, 2 times 1 half to the 0 power, 1 half to the 0 power is 1, but that 1 still needs to be multiplied by 2. This is 2. Uh, when x is 1, I've got 2 times a half, 1 half to the first power, that's 1. 2 times 1 half squared, you know 1 half squared is 1 fourth, so this is 2 fourths, or 1 half. When x is negative 1, I get 2 times 1 half to the negative first. And an easy way to find a fraction to a negative power is to make that the reciprocal of the fraction. That's 2 times 2 over 1, that's 4. And when, two, when x is negative 2, we've got 2 times 1 half to the negative second. That's the same as 2 times 2 squared. That's 8. The fact that the base here is, is a number that's less than 1 is going to change which direction the, the y values get smaller and smaller closer to 0 and the direction where the y values get huge. I've got negative 2, 8. I can do the next one. The next one is actually negative 3, 16. Uh, negative 1, 4. I've got 0, 2. I've got 1, 1. I've got 2, comma, a half, and I can kind of see what's happening here. Um, in, the, in the positive x direction, we're going to get closer and closer to y equals 0, but never quite get there. And in the negative x direction, we're going to get big positive y's. I'll make that one go through the next one at 16. Not a great sketch, but you get the idea. Okay, you should try this one on your own. Pause the video, make the table of values needed, make the sketch, maybe on scratch paper or something like that. See if you can get this graph made, and when you think you've got it, hit play, and uh, get yourself some feedback. I want to set up a table of values that will get me some important points on the graph. I'll pick a couple of negative x's, I'll pick 0, and I'll pick a couple of positive x's too. Uh, when x is 0, 3 times 2 to the 0 power is 3 times 1, which is 3. When x is 1, I get 3 times 2 to the 1st, that's 3 times 2, that's 6. When x is 2, I've got 3 times 2 squared, that's 3 times 4, I've got 12. When x is negative 1, 3 times 2 to the negative first is 3 times a half, or 3 halves, or 1.5. When x is negative 2, I've got 3 times 2 to the negative second, that's 3 times a fourth, that's 3 fourths. And I can plot the points that I've created here, 2 comma 3 fourths. I can plot negative 1 comma 3 halves. I can plot 0 comma 3. I can plot 1 6. I can plot 2 12. The next one would be 3 comma 24 and it's off the graph. So it should come in from very, very small but positive y values. Hit all of these points here. And then shoot off huge. Okay, usually the try it on your own problem ends our screencast, but I wanted to take a chance here just to show you uh, one more skill, and this is actually directly the skill that you'll be doing for pre-class work before our class meeting. Uh, I gave you a table of values, and I want you to write the function rule. So the function rule, of course, is f of x equals a times b to the x. Essentially we're asking you to figure out what a and b are. Now a, a here is the, is the, um, is, is f of 0. And the reason that I can show you that it's f of 0 is that if you let x be 0, b to the 0 power, since b is not 0, is 1. 
So you'll just get f of 0 to be a. So I can show you in this first example that that tells me that a is 4. Because when x is 0, f of 0 is 4. Now to figure out b, I want to look for what could be multiplied each. Uh, as I increase x by 1, what can you multiply by 4 to get 8? Well, it's 2. And if that rule continues, times 2 again and times 2 again, that tells you that b is 2. The base is whatever you can multiply uh, the previous value in the table by to get the next one, as long as the table is increasing in x's by 1. So in this case, what I've got is I've got f of x equals, uh, let's see, a was 4, so 4 times uh, 2 to the x power, because b is 2. For this example, since when x is 0, f of 0 is 6, that says a is 6. Uh, it's important that I pick out the number I multiply by to get the next value in the table. So what can I multiply 6 by to get 2? Yeah, it's a third. 6 times a third. You know, if you need to go off to the side and confirm that. Yeah, that's 2, isn't it? Uh, if I multiply 2 by a third, I get 2 thirds. And if I multiply 2 thirds by 1 third, I get 2 ninths. B is 1 third. So the function rule here, f of x equals, how about 6 times 1 third. Uh, if your base is a fraction, it sure would be helpful if you put the fraction in parentheses so that whoever reads your written work knows to raise the whole fraction of that power. 6 times the quantity 1 third to the x power. Thanks for watching.